You know how charity works? People that need money get it through donations of generous benefactors. Well, there's something quite similar in the crypto world, but it is way better. And it utilizes a special formula to be able to give even the smallest donations large power. This special formula is actually called the mathematically optimal way to fund public goods. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education, and here we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that people like you can easily understand them. In this video, we are going to explain what the heck quadratic funding is, how it's much better than any other charity matching program, and at the end of this video, you'll even get a step-by-step -step tutorial of how you can use it to help this channel earn free money through a very small donation of just $1. First off, let's go over the formula. It's very, very complicated if you don't have any math experience, but I am going to make it as simple as possible. I watched all the videos out there and read all the articles, and hopefully this will be the easiest explanation for you to understand. Well, in whiteboard crypto fashion, let's go through an example and see exactly how quadratic funding works. First off, every quadratic funding grant has a set amount of money that will be divided up to the projects that are approved. In this example, we are going to use an example of $20,000. Usually, this money is provided through generous donations, either from philanthropic works or members who want to support a community. Next, for this example, let's choose three projects that are useful. In this case, we're going to pick ourselves, the channel that inspired us, which was Finematics, and also a YouTuber named Taiki. He consistently creates great videos about yield farming, so we're going to include him. There's a link to his channel in the description below. First, let's assume we all raise some money, but through a different amount of donations by a different amount of donors. First, us, Whiteboard Crypto, we raised $3,000 by 600 people each donating $5. Are you ready to run through the math? Because if you're not, just skip this section. So first to run through the formula, we need to take the square root of $5 for the first donation. This is 2.236. Now, if the next donation was $10, we would then add the square root of 10 to 2.236, but it's not. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna say all the donations were $5 each. So now we take 2.236 and we add it to 2.236. Then we do this for all the donations, adding up the square roots of all the donations. Once you've added them up, all you do is square the total. Don't worry, I've done the math for you. It comes out to be 1,798,281. Now for the purposes of this video, we are going to just say that this is 1.8 million. This 1.8 million is the total voting power for Whiteboard Crypto. Next up, let's go to Finematics. Now, Finematics is a reputable channel, so they acquired heftier donations, but less people donated. Jacob raised $5,000 by 200 people, each donating $25. Now, if we apply the same formula that I just went through, where you add together all the square roots of each donation and then square that number, Finematics gets a nice round number of 1 million voting power. Finally, let's suppose that the supporters of Taiki are very generous, so 7 people donated $1,000 each. If we apply the same formula, we get his voting power being equal to 48000 So, continuing with the example, let's see how much of that initial $20,000 in grant money gets distributed. We use a simple ratio for each project's voting power compared to the total voting power of all the projects. And basically this is a fraction or a ratio that is the same proportion of funds that they will receive. So we have to find the total number of voting power across all the projects, which would be 1.8 million plus Finematics 1 million plus Taiki's 48,000. So the total is 2.8 million. Then for Whiteboard Crypto's share, we'd simply take 1.8 million of that voting power and then divide it by 2.8 total voting power to get our ratio. And then we multiply that by $20,000. This equates to $12,632 in free grant money. Now, next up, Finematics had 1 million voting power. So 1 million divided by 2.8 million equals around 35%. So you multiply that percentage by $20,000 and Finematics gets $7,024. Lastly, poor Taiki had seven donors. And even though they were generous, 48,000 divided by 2.8 million times our $20,000 
only earned him $343 of extra free money from that grant. Now, remember, the total of the original donations also goes to the project, so we would receive our original $3,000 and the $12,632 for a total of around $15,600. Next, Finematics would get his original $5,000 and the $7,000 of grants for a total of $12,000. Finally, Taiki would have his original $7,000 and then a little bit of extra $343 of grant money for a total of $7,343. Now, even though Taiki had some generous donations, we had way more total donors. And because of this, the grant gave a majority of the grant fund to us. This way, each donation has a vote in the grant being split up, but each separate donation doesn't lose its value because it still goes to the project. The idea here is that the free grant money gets distributed to projects based on how many donors each project has, not how wealthy each donor is. Now this brings about a good question that you might have already had. Why not just create 10,000 fake accounts using some code and then take home all the money yourself? Well, quadratic funding platforms usually have some form of a verification process to make sure that each donor only counts as one person. This means each person gets one vote in the donation pool and you can't scale using bots. Usually, verification can be lengthy, sometimes even including connecting other accounts. So that quickly solves this problem. Moving on, I wanna teach you something that is relevant to quadratic funding. Well, quadratic funding is mostly for public goods. And to understand what public goods mean, we need a quick lesson in economics. Here at Whiteboard Crypto, we love economics, since it ties so heartily to the idea of cryptocurrencies. So first off, there are four types of goods, and we're gonna run through those now. There are private goods. These are goods that are not available to everyone, and they're also competitive. For example, Computer GPUs are private goods. They are not free, and they're also very competitive. There are only so many of them out there. The second type of good is called common goods. And common goods are goods that are available to everyone, but they're competitive. For example, where I live, it is absolutely free to go fish. And you can even scoop up some dirt out of a park if you want. These goods are available to everyone, but they are competitive. If everyone takes all the fish out of a lake, then I can't have any fish. Shout out to my grandpa for showing me a rare fishing spot. The next type of good is called a club good. And these are goods that aren't available to everyone, but they also aren't competitive. For example, movie theaters and private golf courses are considered club goods because the members don't have to compete within them, but they also aren't available freely to everyone. Skillshare is another perfect example, even more so if we created a private membership for members who wanted to support this channel and have access to private tutorials, then that membership would be a club good. Lastly, we have public goods. Public goods are goods that are available to everyone and they're not competitive. As a perfect example, this channel is a public good. It is free and available for anyone who wants to watch, and it doesn't matter if you watch one video a million times, you will still be able to watch another video. Other examples of public goods are air, national defense, and any open source software. Now this is where the important part is. Usually, because public goods benefit everyone and they're not competitive, they usually struggle for funding, simply because they're not free and they're not competitive. So quadratic funding is a perfect way to raise money for these projects. Now, there are actually a few quadratic funding platforms out there, but the most well-known and by far the most donated is one called Gitcoin Grants, which is actually associated with GitHub. Now, since we've already went over an example of quadratic funding, explained how it works, and then also a brief overview of the types of goods as a form of an economical review, for the rest of this video, I'm simply going to show you how to donate to our Gitcoin grant, since a new round of funding just started. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, and you can even donate $1 if you'd like. But I will promise every dollar that gets donated will be put to use to creating more high-quality, unique, entertaining cryptocurrency educational videos, just like this one and all the other ones on our channel. So without further ado, here we go. All right. Now it is actually time for the tutorial. Now to actually donate, the first thing that you'll need to do is to download MetaMask. So if you've never used MetaMask before, I'm gonna go ahead and download MetaMask. And I have the Brave browser, but you can also do it for Chrome or Firefox. You just click this install button here, and it's very easy to install. Again, I'm gonna try to include every step of the way, so that if you're new to this, you can actually understand it. I know a lot of people skip the simple stuff. 
So we're going to go ahead and set up our MetaMask account here. And this option right here basically says, hey, we have a new account and we want to set up a new wallet. So we're going to go ahead and do this. And this is basically just telling you about it. Uh, I'm going to agree to it because they're pretty nice. We're going to use a simple password here. Agree to their terms and service. You don't have to watch this video, but it is kind of interesting. And then here, this is revealing your secret words. So these are actually a representation of your private key. So don't let anyone watch this. I'm going to go ahead and click on it so that I can see it, and then we'll show you what to do afterwards. All right, you can't see it here, but there are 12 words here that I have already written down. So I'm going to go ahead and click this next button. And then this here, all you have to do is put these in order. So I've shown some of them here, but not all of them, because someone could technically guess my password. And basically, you just start clicking on them to put them in order. Once you have them in order, you just click the confirm button. And it's basically saying, hey, we made sure that you actually wrote it down. Because if you don't have it, if you forget this password, you really can never recover your account. And here we go. We have our first account set up. So we currently have zero Ethereum. And we're on the Ethereum mainnet. So to transfer money from Coinbase into our MetaMask wallet, which, by the way, if you click on this little like, puzzle piece up here and you click this pin button, now MetaMask will stay up here. So we can click on this and exit out of this. And you can actually see this is my account right here. There is actually no money in this account yet. But I'm going to show you how to put it in there from Coinbase. So we're going to go over to Coinbase. And you can see about five or six days ago, I bought around $100 worth of Ethereum. And you need to wait around five or six days because Coinbase likes to make sure that your bank account actually has money to pay for what you're buying. So usually if you buy something on Coinbase or Binance or Gemini, you usually have to wait around a couple days for everything to confirm. Anyways, I've waited around those days already, so I can go ahead and click this send slash receive button here. And basically, I'm going to be sending my Ethereum from my Coinbase account to my actual wallet. So the first thing that we need to do is go over here to our MetaMask little icon. You click on it, and then do you see this right here where it says copy to clipboard? If you click on that, it will copy it to your clipboard. So basically, I'm going to go, I clicked on this send slash receive thing here, and this brought this up. So we want to make sure that Ethereum is selected because that is what I have. If I go to my portfolio down here, you see that I have around $100 in Ethereum. So I'm going to send slash receive. I'm going to click on send because we're sending it from Coinbase to our MetaMask account. So again, I'm going to show you how to copy your address. You just click this thing right here. You copy your address and then you just paste it in here. And now this is a note. You do not need to do this. Some places require a note, but for the purposes of Coinbase and this video, you don't need a note. And you want to make sure this is Ethereum. If this is not Ethereum, you may lose your money. So I'm going to go ahead and send all of the money that I have and click the continue button. Here, we're going to pay around 0.0084 Ethereum as a network fee, which I'm going to be honest, is actually a very high network fee right now. But I need to make this tutorial for the people that want to watch it. So right now, we have $97 that we are sending. And we're actually only going to be sending our account $68. Around $30 is a transaction fee. But again, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to go ahead and pay that and show you how to actually do it. I'm going to go ahead and click the Send Now button. And then, of course, it wants me to check my Authenticator app. And so we've sent that. We've sent 0 0.02 Ethereum. And now we just play a waiting game. We, we just wait for the blockchain to actually confirm this. So to check if you actually have your tokens or not yet, you can click on your little MetaMask thing. And you can see that was actually confirmed insanely fast. That did not take 10 minutes. That took around a minute, which is actually quite surprising. So now that we actually have money in our MetaMask account, we have $68. Now remember, that network transaction fee was outrageous. You should not be paying $30 gas fees for a transaction. All right, now that we actually have some money in our account, we're going to go over to the actual Gitcoin page for our project, which is Whiteboard Crypto. And you can read through this page. There's a lot of interesting information on here. But if we scroll back up to the top, you'll see this Add to Cart button. We're going to go ahead and click that. And then up here, this little icon, it added a one up here. If we click on that, we can actually check out, which means we can actually make our donation go through. So here, we're not going to use DAI. We don't have any other tokens. We have Ethereum, though. So I'm going to select Ethereum. And the amount of Ethereum that we have, I'm actually going to donate a very small amount here. So something like 0 0.005, let's say that. 
And then down here, you can always change how much you want to actually add to the match pool fund. And you can also hide your wallet address if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and select zero here. And then I'm going to do the standard checkout. So this is going to be around $40 in gas fees. And then the total is 58. So we are actually donating around $18 here. And these numbers constantly change. So I'm going to go ahead and donate our money. So let's go ahead and click the confirm button. And here it'll actually show us how we can actually maximize our match. Currently, our contributions are currently being matched at 50%. We can click this verify button, which this is my uh, other YouTube channel. Basically, we can go through here and we can verify other things that actually improve how much money will be donated by our donation. So you can go ahead and do these things if you want to. Anyways, thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope that you've really enjoyed this kind of walkthrough specific step-by-step -step tutorial. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I really hope that you've learned something. And most of all, as with all of our videos, we hope to see you in the next one.